here we have the review of the Murta Guzzi V85 TT and this one is the travel edition. Now with the V85 TT you have the standard bike, the adventure and then the travel. The differences are not that huge and neither are the price points but there's different colorways and there's some different options. But the biggest difference really the adventure has all aluminium panniers that open from the top. This, the travel one, has a plastic and alloy and the standard version comes without. Very simple changes. This one actually comes with heated hand grips, also the Maya or the media interaction system that allows you with the app to uh, have that Bluetooth communication with the dash so you can have kind of navigation, answer the phone, that kind of thing. So a slight adjustment there on the electronics, but pretty much from the suspension, the brakes, the engine and uh, a lot of the motorcycle is very much the same. With the Adventure and the Travel Edition, you're also gonna get a higher, the touring windscreen, so a bit more comfort there on the highways or doing long distance miles. Now, this is my first time riding the 85 TT and I have to say, I really do enjoy it. It's a bike that's grown on me the more that I've ridden it. Uh, I've had it now on loan for quite a little while. I've got to know it and I have to say, it's got some little characteristics and I'll talk you through those. So the engine, when it's cold, uh, it doesn't respond really that quickly. So it likes to be warmed up. So once the engine's warmed up, the engine just purrs really nicely. It's not an engine that likes to be revved. Just really between 2,000 and really 4,500, which doesn't sound like a lot, has a lot of power range and it just doesn't need to be revved and because of that having such low rpm and the engine functioning just fine at those low rpms it is a bike that just ticks a lot and the more miles you do and the more time that you spend in the saddle the more you enjoy it it's not a bike that's full of power that when you just crack your wrist you're going to take off and overtake a bunch of vehicles it's not going to happen if you're going to set up anything on this bike you've got to you know think in advance and uh, set up an overtaking maneuver accordingly it's not a bike that you can just whack open the throttle throw some gears down and take off it's not designed that way the way that the engine is designed and the configuration of the engine just allows you to have just like plenty of torque with very little RPM. Now with that is also a sensation that comes back through the bike and pulses, you can really feel the pulses of the engine. So it offers quite a lot of character that comes back from it as well. Also on early mornings and on you know chilly evenings, I've really enjoyed these cylinders just warming my legs and my knees and keeping me nice and warm on the bike. So overall, it's kind of like a motorcycle that's very comfortable. I like its stance. It's very easy to ride. It's easy to jump on and spend all day in it and not really be fatigued in any way. Nice, comfortable bars, nice, comfortable seat. And what I was impressed about this bike is that when I did take it trail riding, it was actually a really good trail bike. I wouldn't say it's as extreme as like the new Yamaha Tenere 700 or an XR650, no way, it's different. This is like riding a, a BMW GS. It is capable, but its restrictions are always with the same sort of things with these motorcycles. Ground clearance and weight. So when you have problems with ground clearance and weight, this bike has only got its limitations. But I was able to take it on some pretty decent single track. And I was really surprised at what I actually was able to get this bike into and out of and the feel that I got back from the bike was always positive. But you get into some sandy washes and the front really does start to tuck so you've got to be careful with that. There's weight over the front, it's a road bike and what you get the difference between a road bike and a dirt bike is usually a lot more weight over the front wheel. But when you're riding on the street that makes the bike turn and it's more easy to ride. Get that on the dirt, hit some sandy washes and it does the opposite and it just pushes the front, you tuck the front and then you've got to get the weight back. So you can do that two ways as a rider, get your weight back yourself physically and open the gas, get some weight off the front. But it's a big bike. So a bike like that for you to be kind of like manhandling it, you've either got to be a really experienced rider or you've also got to be somebody who's, you know, really going to be wor uh, wanting to put their motorcycle in maybe a precarious position. So most people who are going to ride this, they're not going to do that. They're just going to ride mellow trails. 
and he can handle that sort of stuff. I went off camping for a couple of days, threw my stuff in here, loaded up the bike, easy. It's a motorcycle that you can really enjoy the weekends on. Take these off, enjoy the city on. It's got a good stance, it's good looking. And like I said, the more that I've rode it, the more I've enjoyed it. Because it's really a motorcycle that's just kind of very pleasant to ride. It's just gonna get you there. It's not gonna excite you with its power, but it's still got some decent power down there from this engine. You've just got to learn how to ride with it. Now, one thing that I noticed that it didn't like was downshifts that were kind of lay before a corner. So that if you do lay downshifts into a corner, the engine has quite a lot of engine braking. So you've got to make sure that you've got your gears down early before a corner, or just leave it in that taller gear and let it just pull using the torque. So some characteristics from the bike that you've got to get used to. As with any motorcycle, you can usually soon adapt. Now dash wise, there's a lot of information on the dash that is very useful. But for me, I actually found it on the small side. I just like to see the dash a little bigger. It took me a while to kind of get into that information. And when I'm riding, sometimes you only have a moment to glance down. So a bigger screen would be very, very useful. It's so also with my cameraman that I've had on the back here, there's loads of room at the back. There's some nice grab rails, comfortable pegs. So it's also a motorcycle that you can share. Motorcycling is an activity that we do solo, but it's great when you can share the experience. And this is definitely a bike that you can do that on. And chassis wise, it's a very capable bike in the canyon, enjoys the off-road trails, and it's pretty effortless to do that. So rider modes, you've got three different rider modes. You've got rain, road, and off-road. And when you go into the off-road mode, it disengages the uh, rear ABS so that you can skid the rear wheel. And it also has some traction control, but it does allow quite a bit of slip. So I was able to still slide the rear and get the feeling back from the bike. But if you don't like that, you can go into the settings and get rid of the traction control as well. Not got electronic suspension that's all manual but some nice easy rider modes and little creature comforts like cruise control and heated hand grips always kind of keep you smiling on those chilly mornings or long highway miles so wheel wise we've got some spoke rims to accompany that we've got the michelin anarchy tire now i've never used a michelin anarchy tire before i have to say impressed it's a really capable tire goes on the street feels good on this trails felt good when I got this bike into a bit of a precarious position on one uphill I had to just take the air out of the tire deflate it slightly and it then allowed me to get a lot more grip so impressed with the anarchy tire here from Mitchell bike that's very capable the engine is not going to set you on fire with its acceleration or its power it purrs along and it's got a lot of character and I do enjoy that and another couple of positive points about the V85 TT and that's that large six gallon gas tank that's just perfect for adventure riding and allows you to spend all day in the saddle and not worrying about where the next gas station is going to be and for maintenance this is the only machine in the mid displacement adventure category that has a shaft drive. And also, with those air cooled cylinders sticking out the side, it makes it an easier bike to work on and service. So, overall, the Murder Guzzi V85 TT is a very capable machine. You're going to enjoy the highway miles, you're going to enjoy the canyon, and when it comes to adventure, it's definitely capable to hop on those trails and take you into the unknown. The Moto Guzzi V85 TT is a great all-round machine and I've definitely enjoyed my time on it.